Okay. Um, and the greens, uh, 10% at the moment. I think they'll go up. Um, but it's New Zealand first. That seems to yes. be the surprise so far of the night. Yes. Um, currently 6.66%. Um, so that's more than I think anyone was really predicting. That's right. um, yeah. And I think that, I mean, election campaigns these days are increasingly stage managed and professionalised. Yeah. But what we've seen from this election campaign is no matter how carefully yeah. stage managed something might be, There's things always, can go awry. Yeah. And the teacup scenario was a classic yeah. example of that. Um, and Winston Peters has, has yeah. taken the advantage of that, that process and we're yeah. seeing the perhaps the results of that tonight. It was that that subsequently gave him the oxygen of yeah. publicity to appear on the leaders debate, yeah. on the, the multi-party leaders right. debate. And all of that has given him momentum. Do you think it was a mistake for National to go after him as hard as they did at the start yeah. of the last week? Well, um, I mean, you know, obviously there was the strategy there to try to, um, mm. you know, um, harden up the vote. Um, mm. It remains to be seen whether yeah. uh, that was successful or not. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it looks like we've got Joe Stockman coming in. Uh, Joe Stockman is editor of Critic, oh. and he's about to call through. Yeah. But, but before we go, we should say thank yes, you very much so, to Jeff. Um, thank you. Well, yeah, thanks for that. Very yeah. interesting about the leaders' debates. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Have a good night, yeah. Jeff. Appreciate it. So uh, we're uh, going to be getting a call from uh, Joe Stockman, who is uh, editor of the Critic magazine down here at the University of Otago. He's also a political studies uh, student or That's graduate, right. I believe. Yep. So he's been trained by the best and the brightest, <laughs> or at least by Bryce. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he is actually up in Auckland. So he's our roving reporter who's going to be using um, his fancy iPhone, I believe. There we are, a bit of product placement, to be bringing us a direct... Uh, a, a view of what's happening up in those margin, uh, those Auckland electorates where things really are so happening. So we haven't actually looked at Auckland Central. Um, did you have a pick tonight for how you think that would go? Well, Auckland Central, that's an interesting one, isn't it? Because the uh, question is whether uh, Nikki Kay won it on her own or whether she won it because she wasn't Judith Tizard. Yes. And I see at the moment it's pretty much it's neck pretty and neck. It's pretty close. 1,925 for Jacinda Ardern, uh, 2,086 for Nikki Kay. That could go either way. I mean, it's, it's almost like they do mirror each other well, because they're so similar. That. There is that. I mean, mm. I've, I've never thought that Jacinda will be able to, Jacinda Ardern will be able to win it off Nikki Kay because she's too similar to her. What's the point of difference, you know, I've sort of wondered about. Um, because they both have that sort of social liberal um, mm. yeah. you know, thing going on and, uh, and quite moderate mm. sort of politics. Quite. And I haven't really seen why uh, Auckland Central uh, electorate would see any reason to change their... Um, maybe, maybe it's some people like Pinot Gris, some people like Savion Blanc. That's right. It's, you know, maybe that's the kind of election that we're seeing right now there. Mm. OK, well, hopefully Joe will be able to tell us what the atmosphere's like. Absolutely. Um, still waiting on his call. Oh, we are? OK, so we'll keep on padding away then. Um, yeah, the... Uh, so Joe's going to be in Auckland Central. He's going to be talking to us about... Uh, what's happening there. He's also then later in the night going to be in the uh, Epsom uh, camps of uh, John Banks and he's uh, also going to go and see... Uh, that's right. He's going and to go and see Mr Invisible as well if he can actually get him on camera. Okay. Mm. And it certainly is uh, looking interesting in Epsom because as we were saying before, uh, it's... We'll just check that again, but um, I think that advanced voting is going to uh, favour ACT. Mm -hmm. um, John Banks in this case. So let's go back to Epsom and see that no John Banks is still quite clearly ahead. But that's that's still the same 6.4%, so, so, so it doesn't seem to have been updated. It, try hitting refresh there and we'll just see if we can get okay. ourselves a decent... Um, no, they've stopped counting. Oh, they've gone for a tea break. Yeah, they must have. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, that's okay. pretty funny because like, there was that cup of tea thing at the new market. Yeah, I'd say. <laughs> Very good. Okay, Ohario also could be close. Um, I've always presumed that Peter Dunn will, will win easily, but it's fairly close. He's it's uh, about 250 ahead. Yep. But again, it's it you know, could, could still go anyway. Could still go either way. But you know, the interesting thing there really is Katrina Shanks still uh, you know polling high, and she's the floor on the plan. Well, that's right. That's probably not what exactly National wanted to see, given that the uh, state of the, uh, the 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 national results at the moment. Okay, so let's go talk about New Zealand first, um, just very briefly before we go to to Joe. Um, Grant Robertson said before, I think, that um, they might have lost some votes to New Zealand First. Labour might have lost some votes. Yeah, he I did mean, say that. Uh, 
is that your feeling that those votes... That's those, votes are, those votes have come from somewhere. Yeah, they come and from I don't, somewhere. I don't think it's, they've come from the National Party. No. No. No, and I do think uh, Labour has, I think, uh, bled to New Zealand first a bit, which, you know, that's the problem when you're seen as being an oppositional bloc. That's I right. Mean, there is the churn of votes churn, moving yep, from one right. to the other. Okay. Mm. Okay, we're just waiting on a call from Joe Stockman. No, oh, we're being told we don't have him. We don't have him. In that case, I think we'll move to a completely different topic. I oh, know. Looks like it's coming in. Is it? Actually, and James on for you. Okay, um, let's just see if this is Joe coming through. No. Um, well, let's go to. No. No. Okay. In that case, we're going to move to. Let, let's let's go to something completely different. Um, we're going to uh, move to a panel discussion of sorts. Uh, using three of our uh, politics students down here at the University of Otago. Bryce, do you want to do the introductions? OK, we've got James Meager on the right, which I think is probably appropriate. Uh, <laughs> and Nicky, and he's a politics and law um, student, and he's going to tell us a bit about the National Party and um, how they're <laughs> going tonight. Uh, Nikki Lomax, uh, Green Party specialist. Um, she's done her dissertation on the Green Party. Um, and Ashley Murchison, a PhD student in the politics department, and she'll give us a bit of feedback on um, or her analysis of Labour's uh, results tonight. Mm. So, um, New Zealand First, though, let's start with them, since none of them are experts <laughs> in New Zealand First. 6.66%, um, the number of the whatever, uh, devil, um, <laughs> the number of the beast. Uh, what do you make of them being so high at the moment? Yeah, it's scarily high, isn't it? Scarily high? <laughs> yeah. Uh, perhaps they've counted some of the advanced votes um, in with that, and maybe some of the older population have caught on to that early and are sending their advanced votes in early rather than going out mm. on the day. But who knows, perhaps it's just the case of Horizon Poll being right and everyone else in the world being wrong. That's right. Mm. Actually, up to 6.8%. So we're looking at, what, about 10 seats for New Zealand First? Mm. Um, well, so it, 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 like Winston's very sceptical of the polls themselves, so maybe he's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, and we had him on vote chat, and he seemed to be very dismissive of the opinion polls. But I think it's probably just the case that he's hit his peak early, hasn't he? Yeah. I mean, not early, just now hit his peak. And um, the cup of tea went in his favour, and, um, yeah, suddenly mm. he's been... Um, events have yep. conspired to land them in the right well, place. It is still early days. I think they're at about 10 or 11 percent of the vote counted They're overall? Yeah. Up to 22 percent now, actually. Is that right? Yeah. Now? Well, okay. Well, maybe not what, so are, what are they sitting at? 20 percent of polling places mm -hmm. counted. Polling places. Oh, okay. yeah. um, I think throughout the, the night, same. though, it'll drop down. Do you think New Zealand first will drop down? Yeah, I, I mean, at this rate, it's looking like they're going to make it over the 5 percent threshold, yeah. which means you'll have some fun campaigning to do next election. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I don't... I would be kind of surprised if they managed to, to hold the momentum that's coming through at the polls right now. OK. Of course, one of the unfortunate things is that if they do slip under 5%, they will miss out, whereas other parties like um, the Mana Party and ACT and um, Māori Party will have seats in Parliament. And what's unfortunate about that? Well, because they got less... Uh, less um, OK, so the unfair... The yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Mm. Which is perhaps one of the things that you could change about MMP if it came through in the um, other referendum. Get rid of the lifeline from winning an electorate seat and therefore not having to meet the threshold? Or no, I'd go the other way. I'd kill the threshold. Kill yeah. the threshold. Yeah. Okay, yeah, mm. that's fair enough. Um, I, I think I've heard you talk about getting rid of electorate seats in, in, in general. Well, if, eventually, I don't think it'll happen in, in your time. It might happen in my time. <laughs> um, I, I feel just because of the way that technology is evolving and the fact that we are no longer really um, separated by geographical differences as much as we used to be, that there might come a time where we don't need a physical hold to our MPs. So MMP could just be, well, MP. Well, like next, I think, and you just have uh, one electorate throughout the country um, and you have the party vote. I think they do something similar in Israel where they have open list proportion. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I, I think open list is a good thing so that mm. the voters then do have some control over who's getting in individually mm. so they can go to the ballot box and rank it. Mm. But I honestly think that that's a long, long way mm. away and probably up for grabs in the next time we decide mm. to fiddle with our um, electoral system. Which could be some time away by the looks of things. Mm. Okay, what about the Green Party? Should we talk about them? Um, Currently on 10%, um, 
I thought something higher would come yeah, about you tonight. You were saying 15% during the week, which oh, is I kind of like optimistic. a possibility, <laughs> but my, my prediction at the start of the night was 135 all right, that's quite specific. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think uh, they're on ten percent at the moment. I mean, the thing about the Greens is that they they get a lot of special special votes, like they get quite a high proportion of those. So if they're on ten percent now, I mean, if you, like in the past, they quite often whatever they end up on at the end of the night, it will be bumped up by a little bit. Yeah. So if they're on ten percent now, and then they maybe get to eleven by the end of the night, who knows? Maybe they could end up with twelve percent overall. But yeah. yeah. And I think they'll benefit from the urban uh, voter booths yeah. coming Definitely. in. Absolutely. Later. Absolutely yeah. They always so, do. Yeah. They, get, they get a lot in Wellington yeah. Central, Rongtai, Auckland so, Central. I think we might look at 12%, do you think, um, as a final? Yeah. I think so uh, who would be in Parliament? Well, who would be the, the, if, with 12%, um, yeah. 14 MPs, is that right? Maths? Yep. Yeah, 15 at least, 14, I think. Yeah, yeah. Again, 15. It okay. on. The, the Centre Lagua formula, which is right. the mm. kind of maths that you can't do in your head. Well, yeah. number, <laughs> number so, 15 on the list is James Shaw, who's the yeah, candidate yeah. for Wellington Central. Yeah. Um, number 14 is Mojo Mathers, who's um, Christchurch-based, and she's deaf, which, so that would be the first deaf MP in Parliament, which would be mm. quite interesting. interesting. Um, she, I read something her talking the other day about how she was brought up as a, um, a lip reader, so she would use that, and also like because they take Hansard notes readily in Parliament, she would have those on some kind of... So why wasn't Mojo at the teacups gate scandal? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Outside the window, <laughs> Good question. In, she'd be able to solve the well, problem Well, she, she's, she's based in Christchurch, so maybe she didn't quite... Yeah. So who, 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 who didn't get an invite. Yeah. <laughs> so who else is on the list? Who else is on the list? Um, OK, so you've got the MPs... So obviously we've had Keith Locke and Sue Kishley leave, but yep. the, the remaining seven are high on the list. Um, Eugenie Sage, um, she's number six... Yeah, so, so she, she, she will definitely be in. She's um, former ECAN, so she's just been sacked by Nick Smith. Mm. Um, she's a regional councillor there. She's had a lot of experience. She worked for Forest and Bird. She, used to, she actually worked for Helen Clark for a bit in the late, early 90s. Mm. Like she, and she's been through... She's got lots of experience with the... Um, with RMA and resource consent and all that kind of stuff. Yep. She's very highly respected by mm. the Greens. Clearly to be that high on the list too. So mm. um, then oh, uh, number nine... So then you've got the... Candidates. Number nine is Jan Logie, who's a graduate of the politics department at Otago. Mm -hmm. um, is also another graduate of the politics department at number number twelve, so Holly mm. Walker. So yeah, mm. good. So <laughs> got, uh, Bryce and I have made this comment before. There are going to be on the green list a lot of new faces, fresh faces, young faces, young too. faces. Absolutely, absolutely. Which um, is one of the greens' differences. The this election though also has seen the greens take it slightly different approach to campaign and a slightly different approach to their presentation. Are you happy with the way they've gone? Um, I think it's very clever. Mm -hmm. I think that well, that's clever, but are you happy with it? Well, y yeah, I, th mm -hmm. I am. I think that the... I mean, it, you, nobody can speak for all green voters. There no, were no, definitely no, I'm some asking you. I'm asking yeah. you. I'm putting well, you on Were you here. out in the fields with the stickers with the rest of them then? Oh. No, I'm not, I'm not a <laughs> green member. I'm not a campaign. But oh, I think okay. the fact that they're still polling... Um, highly and that, that it looks like they're going to have a good result from this election shows that they haven't lost that core mm -hmm. voter base, so their, their traditional sure. constituency which is seen to be the more activist type. So they seem to have retained that plus mm -hmm. the fact that they're polling a little bit higher this election managed mm -hmm. to attract some of that more mainstream mm -hmm. left so to speak. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I so, think... Well that, that's a nice way then to segue into what's happening with Labour. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Labour it's around uh, 25, 26 percent, yeah. which you know that's where the polls sort of had them leading in. Now they will pick up a bit later on, as yeah, they, so we do know yeah. that. Uh, so it's not where they're going to end up on the night, but it's it's not the swing back that they might have been hoping for. And what's interesting is that they started off the campaign higher mm. than that in the polls. What, what do you, what's your take on what happened? It's a little bit perplexing because I think most of us were expecting mm. overall that gap to close throughout mm. the election campaign and it just hasn't happened. I don't think there's... Um, the Labor hasn't really been able to gain traction off mm. the asset sales message. So I think that while it's been one of those issues that people might have an opinion on, it's not necessarily a vote-changing mm. issue. Yeah. It sounds like... Okay. OK, it sounds like we might have someone coming in to join the conversation. Um, so we'll thank you and yeah. we'll find out who it is we're about to talk to here. Yeah, but stick around. Who? Joe. Oh, okay. No, we have uh, Joe Aker. Uh, Joe, Joe it is, isn't it? Yes. Joe Stockman. Joe Stockman. Are you there, Joe? Yeah, right. How's things in the studio? Oh, yes. they're, they're great. We're hearing you well. So what's uh, you're at Jacinda Ardern's 
um, party, is that right? I've actually, I've actually just uh, just left things at Axe Party headquarters in Epsom, where they're still awaiting uh, Mr Don Brash and Mr John Banks to turn up. It's a pretty subdued atmosphere in the Axe camp. They're, uh, they're, they're pretty worried about what they're calling the New Zealand first effect. Um, I just spoke with David Seymour, the Auckland central candidate for Act. Um, and he was saying that he's quite disappointed that the uh, the goal within the ACT Party was definitely get to, to two to three seats. And on the current polling, it looks like they're only going to get the one. They're only going to get Tom Banks if he can hang on to that pretty slender 400-vote lead. Uh, so things are going to be a pretty long night here at the ACT Party headquarters. Uh, the national media have turned out in force. Um, Roden Christie and Hilary Barry are in there. Uh, and they're turning up in, in big numbers now to, uh, to come and cover what's going to turn out to be a pretty uh, vital seat. Uh, things could get a little bit rough for National if they don't have any more members from ACT coming through. Mm. So the the feeling though there is that banks will hold on or are they still think it's too close to call? They're, they're still feeling it's pretty much too close to call. They're not um, kind of talking about any internal numbers or any results that we're not getting off the television. So it's a, it's a pretty subdued atmosphere. I've seen one bottle of champagne go out so far, but it seems like most people are still just sitting on the beers and the wine, just kind of hope, hopefully waiting to see what's going to happen. Um, I think people are confident that Mr Banks is going to bring it through. Um, I think there's a little bit of disappointment that, um, you know, they don't have a figure like Rodney Hyde who can win with a 12,000 seat majority. Yeah. Um, but it does seem that most people are pretty confident they will hold on to that one very vital Epson seat. Right, yeah. Because I, I think they're probably taking into account the fact that advance votes have been counted and that those will typically be well organised on X part. So I, I think the margin is likely to, to drop still for uh, Banks over Goldsmith. Probably he'll still keep it a, keep ahead, but there must be some doubt about that. Well, I think that it really is up in the air. The fact, though, that the X vote is so low nationwide... Yeah. Do they? Are you hearing any gossip about why they think that is? Are they giving any excuses for their, you know, what is a very low vote? Um, as you say, even if mm. Banks does hold it, it's just him. Do they have a reason why that is? There's not much gossip, but I tell you what, if you ask people about Dr. Bumbrash, uh, he doesn't really get much of a reception. They don't really want to talk about him. If you ask them about Rodney Hyde, they've still got good things to say. So I think that kind of shows the attitude of the internal party. Mm. Uh, but of course, it's just kind of gossip and rumour. Um, I think that, you know, there, there's definitely going to be a bit of reflection, a bit of soul-searching if ACT does manage to stay within Parliament um, about exactly what went wrong tonight, because they're definitely very disappointed that they're looking like a one-seat party rather than a three or possibly even a four-seat party. Yeah, we, we had a couple of the uh, local ACT candidates here with us who were very enthusiastic and, you know, obviously had enjoyed their campaigning down here a lot, but the point they did make was that whatever happens tonight, the party's going to have to go back and rebuild itself. Um, so it's interesting that that seems to be the vibe that you're picking up up there as well. Absolutely, and if anyone knows how to vote strategically, it's definitely the ACT people. Uh, the most interesting moment of the night at ACT party headquarters was when the results came up for the Rodney electorate and a big yoop and a yell went out for the, uh, the ACT candidate who had managed to receive so far zero votes. <laughs> that was obviously the aim for the entire campaign. They were not there for the electoral seat. They were just trying to drive up the party vote. Uh, but it's interesting that they are actually celebrating those as successes. So uh, the uh, outside of Epsom, you know, the way to tell a good act candidate is by how few electorate votes it gets. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. that definitely seems to be the uh, the internal measure of success. <laughs> and so, is there a party atmosphere on the streets of Auckland? <laughs> how's it? How's it? Not, not where I'm at at the moment. The, uh, the people have chosen a pretty interesting um, place to kind of hide themselves away. They're actually directly across the road from a primary school where the counting continues. You can see the, uh, the returning officers <laughs> just simply kind of counting away, uh, which is an interesting kind of dichotomy. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is head down to the viaduct and head down to uh, Nikki, campaign, uh, Nikki Kay's headquarters uh -huh. uh, and see what the attitude is down there. Very good. Well, we'll check back with you later in the night and you can tell us how things are. We're watching that electorate as well. It doesn't affect the overall outcome of the election, but still it'll be interesting to see which of uh, what we've been calling the Pinot Gris or the Savion Blanc gets uh, the final selection. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's looking like it's going to go stab at the moment. I think the Pinot might be a slightly more more refined taste, but I'll let you know shortly. OK, thanks very much, Joe. Thanks, Bryce. Okay. Okay. Well, that's interesting. So, obviously, they're not counting any chickens up in Epsom. OK, <laughs> exactly. But overall, what do you think? Um, it's looking like there will be some overhang. Um, yeah, though... And, and National's looking to get, I think, about 49... No, probably less than that. I'm just trying to do the results... 
I'm just trying to do the numbers here, looking at um, how things will pan out with um, the changes in the voting booth. Um, I think we can project something like about 46 per cent. For nationals? Which, which won't be enough to govern by themselves, obviously. Yeah, um, yeah. Pull, 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 pull the results up there on the screen so we can actually see what we've got going at the moment. Uh, certainly if it's down at 46... If it's down at 46... Uh, hello, uh, you're live on uh, the University of Otago election vote special. Um, who am I talking to? This is Daniel McLaughlin. Oh, Daniel. Daniel. How oh, are Daniel. you? Hi. Good so, sorry, we're flying a little bit by the seat of our pants here, so we're never quite sure who we've got coming in. No, 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 it's okay. It could have so, been worse, I guess. So where are you, Daniel? I'm in Wellington Central. Yeah, yeah, at home? Or yeah, yeah, I'm just at home cooking yeah. dinner. Now, I sh what I should do is for the um, for the for those out there who aren't quite familiar, uh, Daniel McLaughlin is the force behind the uh, Dim Post uh, blog uh, on the inter-wide world web, uh, which is widely read by anyone who matters. And occasionally he's funny, occasionally he's perceptive, very occasionally he's wrong, but you know that everyone is. And Daniel's going to tell us what he's thinking about uh, the evening's results so far. So Daniel, what do you reckon? Um, I, I, it's um, hard to call at this stage. One of the things that I'll be interested to see is um, whether Labor's get out the vote campaign, which, which mm. is normally something they put a lot of stock in, um, yep. uh, makes a huge difference. What they like to do is they like to get a lot of activists and really mobilise to support in low-income, high-density suburbs. Yep. And so um, those polling booths, they have a very, very high turnout. Yep. They take a long time to count. And then they come in at the end of the evening, booth after booth, thousands and thousands of votes, 90% mm. Labor, and they really swing the numbers. Mm. Um, so, you know... It's, if, if they've managed to, to pull that off again, things could change quite suddenly. Yep. It might be that their activists and their base just aren't that interested in them in this election, mm. and so we won't see that. So that's kind of still a, a wild card that's waiting to happen. Sure. Yeah, so the two talking points that we've really been focusing on, I mean, one is this question of, you know, will nationals close to majority come down? Yeah. Will Labour's pump up a bit more? But, you know, New Zealand first, where'd that come from? Um, well, <laughs> National made this, this um, in retrospect, insane decision yeah. during the last two mm. weeks of the campaign to, to foreground Winston Peters to make him a huge election yeah. issue. And, uh, you know, you talk to the you know, National Party inside sources, um, and they, they thought they were being strategic geniuses. The idea was that it would help to discredit MMP, which yeah. they were quite likely to get rid of. And yeah. they thought, oh, it will, it will peel votes off National to New Zealand, off Labour, sure. sorry, yeah. to New Zealand yeah. first, but, be wasted. but not enough to get above him yeah. above the threshold, and it'll be wasted. Instead, it kind of looks like they've lost enough <laughs> votes from their own to New Zealand first without risk of falling below the 50% threshold. So just uh, a terrible, terrible, terrible strategy, incredibly... Um, arrogant and yeah. misguided. Um, and it's interesting. You know, it's interesting. It's a strategy that lasted for what one or two days at most. Yeah, well, it's because yeah. I think, and I wrote about this on the blog. I yeah. think that sort of Joyce and Keith saw themselves as the <laughs> masters of the universe, yeah. moving pieces around on a chessboard. And, yeah. and in reality, Winston Peters is the most experienced politician in the country. Yeah. He's just uh, a, a, a political animal, a machine. And if you give him any oxygen or give him any every opportunity, he will take it. He'll easy advantage, he'll do everything right, he'll just eat you alive. So right. it was just, yeah, um, a, a crazy decision to make. And, sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so the other thing which is, you know, out there at the moment, going to sort of hold up, is uh, the Conservative Party pulling through, uh, you know, two and a half percent, which... Which, which is yeah. all votes from the white right, which exactly. will be wasted. Because Quite. Of, yeah, and, and, you know, the obvious point to make is... In hindsight, he should have had a coffee with Colin Craig. <laughs> yeah. You know, he uh, given them the um, that Rodney electorate. Yeah. Yeah, that could never really have been. Yeah, you could never have predicted that. But, no. Yeah. That, um, yeah. Yeah. Who, who could have seen that coming? And yeah. maybe they will. Maybe they will do something like that in the next election because there's obviously a constituency out there. But yep. but then again, maybe they won't because they can only take votes off the National Party. Really. Sure. So why would you? Well, except now, as you say that. 2.5%. Well, it is wasted. They could still help national because they yeah. are the closest yeah. to 50 at the yeah. moment. Yeah, right. yeah. So, what else are you watching in terms of any electorates that you're finding interesting? I mean, outside of the obvious Epsom, Ohario, and so on. Oh, I'm just interested in, in all the electorates. Everybody else is. There is one that I'm interested yeah. in, which is um, 
might be a bit obscure, Tauranga. Um, oh, yeah. the, the Labour Party made a decision to um, stand uh, Deborah Mahuta Coyle, who was uh, yeah. a senior communications advisor in Phil Goff's office in that electorate. Um, against Simon Bridges, and um, there was uh, the, the people within Labour that I talked to about that were just baffled. It was just, well, why, you know, why, why are we making her? Why are we trying to make her an MP? She has a very senior place on the list as well. So I'll be interested to see how the party vote fears. You know, how, mm. what happens with the party vote, whether she was an elected campaigner, because there does seem to be this tendency within the Labour Party for for them to, um, instead of going out into the community, finding people that are popular in the electorate, for mm. them to kind of pick various, uh, you know, um, staffers in their parliamentary offices in Wellington and sort of put them out there. And maybe mm. that has something to do with the fact that they don't seem to be very, very popular. Right. Um, that, you know, they're, they're just um, uh, drawing from a, a tiny talent pool of this, you know, yeah. quite until a little click. But um, it would be fair to say your take on Labour in the last... Uh, electoral cycle has not been particularly positive. No, uh, and I, and I mm. find the, um, assuming that their results are this dire and they get something like 25 percent yeah. um, because whenever, again, whenever I talk to people in the party, I, you've got this kind of condescending, <laughs> we know what we're doing. Sure. Um, you know, and the, you know, the, obviously the polls were all wrong because they didn't sample cell phones or something and they were actually wildly popular and, yeah. you know, things were, and the, and the polls were going to narrow during the election because, um, not for any reason, just there's a lot of magical thinking that would just sort of happen somehow. Sure. And, and it, it doesn't look like it has. Right. Um, so, yeah, I, I think my criticisms of Labour have turned out to be reasonably well grounded. Yeah. Um, they, they did actually run quite a good campaign. Yeah. Um, but, you know, a few kind of odd decisions and missteps, but really it was the, the, the two years and 11 months. Um, in between the last election and the campaign were, were just a series of ongoing catastrophes and disasters and mm. they really failed, to, for a long time they failed to distinguish themselves from the National Party, they, st they stood for nothing mm. and again whenever you talk to any of them one about that, they, they said oh we're keeping our part of dry, it's good strategy, it's good tactics and mm. it turns out it wasn't, it was, right. it was neither of both. Um, so given that and given that you know even though Labour will come up a bit you know it may get up 27 28 percent still not a great result I mean it's down from the last election it's losing to the Greens the Greens are on the up and so on yeah. what needs to happen there do you think um, well I really think they need I, I think what happened during the the last um, during the last term of the Clark led Labour government the National Party really damaged um, the Labour Party's brand. They just made the, the party and the people leading the party very unpopular. They stood for the nanny state. They mm. stood for, you know, squandering taxpayer money, etc. And Labour really never really managed to... Um, never, never managed to rebuild the brand. So I think they need to get rid of a lot of these um, Clark era, you know, former Clark era ministers, mm. um, bring in some of their new talents and really kind of indicate that it's a new party, that people are voting for new people, mm. um, that, yeah, so certainly the leadership should be someone who wasn't so closely identified with the Clark government. Um, who would that be? Who would well, you put in charge of Labour if you were God? If I was God, well, I'll, uh, another electorate I'm watching is... Um, was it uh, New Plymouth? Uh, if, if Andrew Little can come in, then he'll be the first, you know, Labour MP to win a provincial seat off national since the, the Paleolithic era or whenever. <laughs> and so, um, and when it comes down to it, uh, you know, the core job of a party leader is to win votes off other parties.